Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I just have to say that the movie The Ice Pirates changed my entire life. Um, actually, that's not true, but it did modify <laughs> my plans for the rest of the day. So I had all these things planned, um, and it was like it was fairly tight, you know. Oh, you got to get here before this closes, and this closes. Um, but then I just I just wanted to finish this movie, and then I wanted to do the review of it. So it's changed my the whole timeline's changed. So anyway. Uh, the Ice Pirates is like a lot of the 80s movies I've been talking about. Uh, I never really saw it <laughs> all the way through. I had my best friend who is rich, which means his family had HBO. Um, and that's where I would see any, you know, movie that wasn't like on regular broadcast television. So I, I've always had very, very fond memories of the Ice Pirates while only having seen the last 10 minutes of it. <laughs> we would always talk about it. We go, oh, that was so fun when we watched it. You saw 10 minutes of a movie. But that's how that's how we rolled in the 1980s. So anyway, this is a movie that came out in 1984, and I just did something that I very rarely do. I did a little bit of research on it. So the thing about this is you can probably tell I'm up right now, like an up uh, mood, is this is a fantastic space adventure. And while I was watching it, I just kept thinking... This is like if Spaceballs, you know, if Mel Brooks, he wrote the script and then he got the approval and then he got the funding and they put all the money into his account and he filmed a couple comedy scenes and he goes, you know, I, I just want to do an adventure, like a real adventure. Like I want to do like Buck Rogers or John Carter or, um, you know, Flash Gordon. And that's what it is. It um, So I did a little research and it turns out that the movie had actually started production as a more standard, straightforward sci-fi adventure. And then the studio, MGM, I guess they were going through some troubles, and they basically said, the max budget on everything is $8 million. So the producer, and it sounds like, it sounds like it was like a bunch of just like hacks doing it, but they were having fun, so that's why the movie's so good, is the guy said, yeah, I can rewrite a $20 million script into an $8 million movie, but... I have to really pump up the jokes because obviously jokes are usually cheap. Um, and so they gave him approval and they made it. And this freaking movie is amazing. Now, yes, it is cheap looking. But you know what? It looks like more than $8 million, $8, 9000000 million. Like there is a lot of just like great imagination and world building and lore and designs and I just love it. So the basic premise, which I just thought was hilarious when I was a kid, when my buddy told me it, is that it's it's in space and there's barely any water. So ice is basically a commodity, a very, very expensive commodity. Now, that being said, everyone seems to be just fine. And people go to bars and they have food that is obviously made with water as an ingredient. And people have beer. So it's just a kind of a comedic pre uh, premise. Um, then, you know, things kind of look like uh, the ice pirates They and most of the people in this world. Well, some just dress like generic, like background characters in a Mad Max movies. But the main guys, the bad guys, the Templars and then the ice pirates, they basically it's like they got a bunch of costumes from a Robin Hood movie shot in like 1940s and then they kind of just discoed it out and then they threw in some random stuff from like 1700s like French military uniforms like it's just wacky and if you see this uh um the poster which is you know the, the thumbnail I got right here there's a guy over on the uh left his name is like Michael D. Roberts and this is a movie from the 1980s so it's very like 1980s so uh, black guy usually meant like comedy sidekick back then. So he's making like this ridiculous comedy face in the uh, poster, but the character is actually like freaking awesome. He's like the second in command. He's, he's the one who's like calm, knows how to fix things, figures things out. And then Robert Urich is basically like Captain Blood. He's just like the Errol Flynn, cool space pirate. And man, he is freaking fantastic. So the only thing I really know Robert Urich from was Spencer for Hire, which kind of fell down the memory hole, but it was a fairly big hit, you know, a consistent hit on TV in the uh, 1980s. That's all I knew him about. By the way, 
if you don't see this movie for any other reason, see it to see Robert Urich's hairdo. At first, I thought it was just some crazy wig, but sometimes the wind blows and it looks like his act. So it's hard to tell from the the poster, you know, this image right here. But it is it is literally a perm. And if you're younger than thirty, you might actually not know what a perm is. A perm is when someone would go into the hairdresser and they would use chemicals and curlers to give you kind of like a perm, permanent curl. Now it would wear out, I, I don't even know how long uh, it wore out, but you would actually see it on guys. If you're a uh, comic book fan and you ever seen pictures of Todd McFarlane when he first started his career, he had a perm. If you ever saw like a white guy with like tight but loose, like tight but big curls, that's a perm. Um, Hall and Oates. Uh, Oates? Yeah, Oates. He had a perm. Um, so uh, anyway, it's a perm on the top and the sides, and then it turns into a straight hair mullet in the back that goes into a ponytail. It's it's the craziest thing I ever saw. So anyway, it's the Ice Pirates, and they got, there's a princess. And again, like at the beginning, it's very, very space balls. So I was like, okay, whatever, that's a princess, that's the, the main guy, that's the comedy sidekick. But then it almost feels like 20 minutes in, like maybe the they filmed this in order and the studio stopped asking for dailies. And they're just like, everyone, like, it's like they had like a meeting and they go, hey, we're all hacks, right? And they're like, yeah, we're just hacks. And we just go from one job to another. It's like, I, uh, I have a confession. Like, what is it? They go. I actually like this movie and I'm trying really hard. They're like, oh my gosh, I like it and I'm trying. I thought I was the only one. It's like, no, but I kind of noticed that like everyone's trying. Like the woman that got to play uh, the princess who is like totally Deja Thoris, like 100%. And honestly, Robert Urich back in 1984, he would have made the perfect, perfect John Carter. So she's doing like this really good acting, which is kind of funny because... Then you have other, like some of the bad guys. People are dressed like it's like Robin Hood men in tights in space. Um, honestly, Spaceballs looks pretty like, it looks like a, like a Ridley Scott sci-fi movie as compared to this, at least in like the visuals. Um, but it's just fun. Like there's this whole like world building, like everyone has these robots, but the robots are not very good and they're always kind of falling apart. And then you just kind of cobble together a new robot out of other robots and random components. And then there's just like just random dumb fun things. Like they have the twos, John Matuzak. And if, if you're younger than 40, you probably have no idea who I'm talking about. But he's in it. And at one point they just, they like, he's just he's like this funny guy. He just randomly gets introduced. Like they're, um, uh, they got captured and, and they're going to be made into eunuch slaves. And they're like, uh oh, we're going to this planet and they make everyone into eunuchs except for if you're a monk because they're afraid that God might be real. So there's this monk there and you're like, okay, whatever. And then they show them land and everyone's getting off and then John Matuzak is, uh, he's wearing the the monk's robes, obviously beat him up or just stole him. And he's like, uh, have a good day, my brothers. And then he kind of disappears. Um, and then uh, the part where I actually realized that I was enjoying it just as an adventure and not as a comedy is the point where uh, the two uh, like leads, um, uh, they're literally about to be uh, gelded, you know, castrated um, to be made into eunuchs. And then they're, they're, they're going through the machine that literally has like chomping jaws. But then the princess and her like um, governess or something like that, uh, they had snuck in and they had worked it so that the the nut chomper didn't activate when they went through like these people are literally on a conveyor belt at some factory. Um, and there's this like, the, dude, it's, I'm saying like it's mainly adventure, but like the comedy, which kind of dips in and out. Sometimes it's just like a pure adventure. It's funny. Like they're going down the conveyor belt and they're being made into eunuchs. So they're like getting shaved, but it's like the people who work there, it's just like a factory job. So one guy sprays on the shaving cream and then one guy is like this old man with a straight razor and he's like, yeah. And then uh, later on, it's like two pretty women. I forget what their job is, like shaving his chest or something like that. But uh, uh, he's like, uh, hey, ladies, uh, see you later tonight. And they're like, we don't think you're going to be up for it. And then they start laughing. I was like, this is crazy. 
Um, uh, so uh, then they end up being uh, fake eunuchs. The part where they were dressed as eunuchs, but they weren't eunuchs because, but they had to pretend for a while. That was straight out of John Carter. There are so many things where it's like, oh, you're gonna dress like a thern, so you're gonna paint your skin, you know, uh, yellow, and you're gonna wear a wig because uh, therns are bald, but they wear wigs because they're embarrassed of it. Like that was a total John Carter scene. So then um, they kind of uh, meet up with their band. You got Ron Perlman, very very young, Ron Perlman, um, Angelica Houston. She's not that big of like, I remember her becoming a big deal later, uh, but this is like the beginning of her career where she was just like the famous director's uh, daughter. So she's just taken like this nothing role, but she's cool. She's beautiful. Uh, I forgot to memorize the name of the woman who uh, plays the princess, but she's fantastic. She really draws you in. And then Robert Urich is like, I can't believe Robert Urich didn't become like a, like a Harrison Ford type, like, you know, like populist hero. He's just freaking fantastic so uh, it it's it's amazing like this oh and there's little bits like it's really really cheap so at one point they're they're showing like the cityscape and i'm like isn't that L logan's run like i remember this city so yeah they literally took uh, uh footage from a movie from 10 years earlier just uh, whatever it'll fill up 30 seconds um but uh, it's funny. It's like this junky movie where everyone like accidentally secretly cared. And again, like visually, it's it's kind of just cool. Like there's a pimp robot. And at the end, you watch the credits and there's an actual credit for the pimp robot. They're like uh, pimp robot. And it was like some some like um, uh, company in Van Nuys who made like novelties. At one point, there's a garbage robot. And they're like, what is that? They're like, oh, this is a garbage robot. And it like opens its mouth, you put garbage in it, and it has like this tongue and it like licks its lips. It's like, that was random. <laughs> okay, you know, that probably costs like $3,000 to make. At one point, they go down to this desert planet and they get these couple of, I don't know what they are. They're like, like, um, young burros and javelinas, like baby javelinas or something weird. I mean, it's like a, it's like a pig with like stripes down its back. And then, like, those animals are in all, like, everything you meet ends up becoming, at one point, Bruce Valanche. Yeah, okay. I didn't even know he was ever an actor. I just know, like, in the 90s, he was, like, the guy who did all the Oscars. He did all the comedy sketches. for Bruce Valanche is like, oh, again, this is totally John Carter. He's, like, this emperor, but then his head gets knocked off, and he's just a head. So it's like the, the I think they're called the Kandaki from uh, uh, John Carter. It's like... If you're like a sci-fi, not like, um, I'm super into sci-fi and you just like watch like regular normie stuff, but you actually like read sci-fi and you watch like real sci-fi films and TV shows, like you're going to be into this. Yes, it is a comedy, but it's not really space balls. It's like imitation space balls before space balls. Like I said, it was a moderate budget standard space adventure that got nerfed into being a comedy. And then I guess they're like... Well, we saved a lot of money on costumes by just grabbing random period piece costumes and putting like one little doohickey on them as like a communicator. So uh, the sets are pretty good. Um, the effects, like the space effects are eh, not really good, but there's a lot of just really fun action and it's awesome. I wish I would have watched the whole thing as a kid. It's not, it's like borderline, not really for kids, uh, but it's still kind of like very early 80s, you know. Um, and oh my gosh, the whole last 10 minutes are absolutely insane. They're going uh, through a time warp and they're all aging like one month for every second. So they all, they all age into like dying of old age or being like 75. And then uh, uh, the main character, Jason something, hooks up with the princess. And then she has a kid and he grows to be like 30 years old. And he actually ends up saving the scene. And it's Robert Urich as his, his character's own kid. This movie is amazing. I absolutely love this movie. Oh my gosh. I loved it as a kid just seeing the last 10 minutes. And I love it 10 times more as an adult. Jeez, 30 years later, 33 years later probably. I, pro my, I probably saw it at my friend's house in like the year after when it was on HBO. So I probably saw it like 85. So yeah, <laughs> 34 years later, I finally finished the movie. And boy, that Blockbuster rental is going to be really expensive when I return it. Um, so anyway, uh, go check it out. Uh, I bought it on YouTube for like 
uh, Ice Pirates, uh, Robert Urich and John Batuzak. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Bruce Valanche and uh, uh, Ron Perlman and random people you kind of recognize. Angelica Houston. Anyway, so uh, thanks for watching. And I'm going to watch. I'm not sure what I'm going to watch. i got a good like 20, uh, 20 movies in my various Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, and uh, YouTube queues. Thanks for watching. Bye.